Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we are covering an interesting subject, probably everyone who is trying to uh, get another job or um, his first job and he's maybe considering to uh, be a software tester. He will try to find some resources to find out uh, what actually will his job going to be. Um, one of our subscribers asked, uh, what is the job of one software tester? How should he behave? How can he suggest some improvement? And what other roles can it follow? So after you become a QA, uh, what can you eventually become after? So we're going to talk about all those topics and try to answer all those questions. And the main question, what do software testers actually do? What and how do they do it? Well, we uh, divided here in some sections what the software tester does. So one of the first things that he's doing, he, he should be doing, is to participate in software development process at an early stage. Um, so what do we begin from? When some project starts, one of the first things that are being done is that you gather the requirements. The requirements should be uh, received from the client, but of course, as we already mentioned in some of our videos, a client doesn't really know every time what he wants. He knows what he wants, but he's not really sure how to achieve it and, you know, all, all the little extra details. So when you're gathering the requirements, when you're reading those requirements that you received, that you're trying to do some brainstorm, you know, really trying to imagine all of that, what's written there, then you uh, investigate we can say, yeah, you can investigate those requir requirements. Like, uh, do they all make sense together? Like, is there some requirement that doesn't really fit with the other requirement? And so you're you're trying to find those uh, misleading things, something that is not logical one with another, and maybe some possible gaps. Well, surely they, the client cannot think about everything. So your job is to try to think as uh, the end user and try to find all possible use cases for that software. How will the end user try to use it and see if you have all the needed requirements for those steps. If you find out that something is not covered, some, some, total, some, some flow, some case, or maybe the case is covered, but not all the details are covered. How will some flow go? What are all the details? How will something look like when this happens or that happens? That's when you ask a question and uh, uh, wait for the answer from the client. Uh, those kind of things are being done alone and with your team members and uh, with the clients directly. And uh, they're being done on the so-called refinement sessions. That's something that is taken from Scrum, way of work. So those are those are meetings that uh, when you when you take the requirements that the client has given to you, and then you uh, talk about them and try to dive into more uh, details, so that developers should know so the de developers can know what and how will they build it and uh, testers how to test it. Um, what else? Um, then you can, uh, well, uh, you can give your uh, suggestions for the improvements. Of course, as uh, our subscriber asked, uh, how should he behave? How can he suggest an improvement and maybe when? Uh, it's always a good time to suggest an improvement, of course. It doesn't mean that it will be taken into account because um, usually uh, usually there's not enough time to to take everything into account, all the nice stuff and 
it's almost the case that the deadline is not really long, so you really have to think smart and uh, pick what will be done and what will not be done. So if it's a good improvement, if it really has a huge impact on the whole process and the whole software, it probably will be taken into account. But if it's not, if it doesn't really have, if it has a value, but it's not something that you have the time to do right now before the first deploy to production, for example, then it can be written in some, um, in some uh, 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 task in some, some, I don't know, for example, Jira or some other management tool uh, that can be taken into account later when there's a place and time for improvements and stuff like that. But definitely a tester should uh, give his thoughts uh, what does he think about the software and uh, some improvements if he has something. Uh, so he's uh, equally important as the developer in the team. What else? Uh, requirements are not only uh, like written in plain text. It's it's the design you get from the client. So you're supposed to explore the design to see if everything is like unified, if it looks nice and stuff like that. So you're basically, that the first thing is uh, 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 trying to explore and to understand and to find some gaps in the first step of the uh, of creating the software. So some kind of a preparation for starting a project. Software tester has to think in advance. So after he has gathered or the, all the requirements, uh, he should then think about uh, the automation of the stuff he's going to test. So he can um, explore some uh, testing frameworks uh, there are many testing frameworks, so he will know what kind of project he's going to be on, uh, what are the needs of the project, uh, what is the back end, what is the front end, what will be the communication, what kind of services will he need. So based on that and based on the expectations of validations that he's going to be doing in the tests, he should explore uh, testing frameworks and find uh, the most suitable one for his automation project. And of course, if he's not, uh, if he doesn't really know much about that new framework, that, that's the time when he should start learning it. Of course, in this job, you know that's uh, learning. Learning is active all the time. There's always something new, there's always something more better. So learning all the time, just have that in mind. And it's a really nice process. You, you, when you learn something you, new, you feel smarter, you feel better, and you're more, uh, you're, more, um, you're more capable of doing the things on a better way. Of course, he can uh, think in advance, how, how will he be able to catch the elements? If, if the project structure is uh, like that, that there's not much of the IDs uh, that one element can be cached by. You know, that's the most common way that testers cache the element by the ID, but sometimes it's not possible to insert those IDs or if they exist, they're not unique. And you know that in your automation project, the most important things about catching elements is that you're catching it by something that is unique, otherwise it will not function. So he will, he can uh, talk to the team, he, uh, how can he improve it, improve the way that we'll catch. So he can, uh, for example, ask the developers to maybe insert some kind of uh, uh, automation IDs in the, in the elements so he can use them to easily uh, catch the elements and that uh, his automation project stays stable. Then, it comes uh, next step, testing preparation. What does he do, uh, what does he do there? Uh, that's the thing, that's a way where he uh, is trying to uh, start the, the real process, the real thing. So he's creating the test cases. When you have all the requirements, you can write them in advance. 
uh, and try to so you're trying to map all the use cases everything that can happen that an end user can do of course there's now uh, there's not only uh, uh, UI test cases uh, there's uh, there are uh, backend test cases so you're gonna write them there in that phase then you can create your test automation project you can make for example some base structure so if you know uh, the design and all the requirements, you're gonna know how many pages will there be, you're, you're gonna know the structure. So for example, um, if you're using a page object pattern, which we will surely discuss in one of our future videos, which is really important. So if you're using the page object pattern, you can uh, make those uh, page object classes, you can maybe even name all the elements that you're gonna need. And then after, when the code is developed, you can just uh, insert those locators that you're gonna use. You can think of the, all the methods that you're gonna need and stuff like that. So anything you can do to prepare yourself to make a good head start when all is finished, do, the, do it. Of course, if there's time. And uh, so anything you can do about the preparation, that's the time when you should do it. And then comes the real thing, testing the developed software. So whenever something is finished, it could be a part of the feature, it could be a whole feature, the tester starts testing. Of course, you're going to uh, participate in all kinds of scenarios. Uh, it's, it's really hard to say uh, when should a tester start testing, but like in real, when some, when some part of the code is developed. Sometimes uh, some part of the code can be developed, but it's not testable. So you're going to be in the communication with your team and they're going to uh, give you the green light so you can start testing. So what does the tester do? He tests it manually, of course. Then, then it comes defect reporting when the tester finds a bug he has to report it and developer takes it and starts fixing it and when it's fixed then the tester takes that fixed thing and retests it there's testing and retesting and if everything's okay that part of testing is done if it's not then the tester uh, takes that defect and bring it back to the developer and he works on it again so testing manually, defect reporting, rip testing, and then when you've finished all of your testing manually, uh, then you should start automating all those tests. So all the test cases, I mean not all, you start uh, automating tests that are more, more important first, and if there's time, you can automate as much as possible. Uh, when you finish all of that testing thing, then it's useful, if there's time, to play a little bit with uh, continuous integration tools like Jenkins and Spinnaker to create jobs and pipelines that you will use uh, for uh, automation project of, of this whole process. So you can make... Um, you can make it work like when, whenever there's some kind of a development done, when something is uh, something new, some new code is deployed, you can trigger some tests that can be run uh, on some environment, selected environment, and you can see if there's an impact on the code, if something is broken and stuff like that. So that comes after that. And when all of that is done, tester should create a test report and give the green light if he can. Of course, that's not always the case. If there, um, there should be some kind of uh, agreement uh, when the when the build uh, the the deployed build can be released on production, you have to have definition of done. That's what it's called. So the team has to agree uh, what things should be in place in order to deploy some code on production. And when tester 
uh, sees if everything's okay, like all the main functionalities are working fine. Um, uh, I don't know. There's not there's not many uh, major and there's not many uh, smaller issues and stuff like that. It all depends uh, how much time is left. Uh, then he can give green light or red red light. If he gives a red light, then the code is not ready yet for the production, and the developers must work more on the code on the software. And when everybody's uh, happy with it, then he gives a green light. And he creates that test report so that client can know what is actually done. So there you can prepare uh, how many test cases you have, how many of them passed, how many of them failed. So you can uh, write the known uh, issues and stuff like that. You can uh, insert the pie charts and something visual that clients always like to see. So that's where the, the whole circle kind of uh, ends. Of course, uh, about the other roles that our subscriber asked, what can uh, one QA do before, after he, he maybe uh, thinks about uh, changing his job inside of the IT community? So, um, on my, at my work, I've seen uh, that a lot of QAs ended up to uh, be to work as a project manager. But that's something that you decide. It doesn't really have to mean that that's the only path you can go. It really depends. Uh, what is the company you're working in? Do you have the time to work on yourself, to learn new uh, technologies, new testing frameworks? Is that something that you want? So if it doesn't, it's not really necessary just to have the space and the opportunity to work. But is that something that you want to become one day, like a project manager and stuff like that? Of course, if you have enough knowledge, um, you can become a developer, maybe or whatever you basically like. It's just about what is that you want. And what is uh, that your company uh, gives you? Um, I hope we answered the questions. So um, basically, it's it's known that uh, software testers are kind of underestimated. Their role are, is is uh, underestimated. But the fact is, they are doing much more than just. Uh, seeing what is uh, comparing the, the expected and actual results. That's, there's much more that he's doing and that should be appreciated. And um, thank you uh, for sharing. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you like, share and subscribe and see you soon in the next video. Goodbye.